Hey, what's going on everybody? Today, we are going to go through how I assess and play Juan Partisan. I'm not going to go too much into details on Partisan, just because it's a lot to cover, and I covered in a previous video that I'll link up in the top right corner. But really what we want to think about is, why do I choose the layouts that I do? Why do I have Juan Normals? Why do I have Juan Perry? Why do I even have my weapon palette set up the way that I do? So. This is what I wanted to do to go through and basically pretty much show you what's going through my mindset. You know, really it's a mindset thing. There's some things that I'm doing that I'm trying to be optimal about. And of course there are other things that are not optimal. And so really let's just go through how I have things set up. So now I have two weapon palettes for my partisan wand or one partisan, doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And they differ slightly. The first one has normal attack wand. It also has the Photon Art Wave Crash, in addition to Juan Perry, and then the back palette are all three Photon Arts for Partisan, Fatal Tornado, Scythe Ripper, and Javelin. Now my second weapon palette, though it's the same weapon, the only thing that differs is that I have Rapid or Swift Smash, depending on how it's translated. So now before I get into that difference, let's go through my sub palette. So I have my Photon Blast on the far left, Massive Hunter, Wand Lovers. These two play off of each other. I will toggle them on and on, depending on the situation. There's also other situations where Wand Lover can be very interesting and advantageous, but I'll get into that in a later video. Resta, the Partisan Weapon Action, Shift the D-Band, and then my Elements and my reverser size. Let's talk about normal attacks. And now what I'm going to refer to has a lot to do with frame data. I'll have the frame data in the link below. So you can reference that and get a sense of how I'm making decisions because believe it or not, even when you take into account the Tector weapon damage bonus of 10% with wands and talus, partisan technically still edges it out. And so you might look at the frame data and be like, why am I doing certain things over other things? And once again, I am taking some liberties. I'm not being as optimal, but also thinking of other utility type situations and where not being optimal by going all partisan might benefit me that I'm changing things for one. And so let's talk about the normals. The reason why I choose one normals is twofold. One, they're fast. And just as a comparison, we'll do one normal combo and then we'll do the partisan combo. So technically the partisan combo does more damage and even with that 10% weapon bonus, it still might edge out wand. Wand is not necessarily going to be that damage weapon. But as you notice, wand is faster. Wand has elemental explosions. Those elemental explosions can cause down states. So while I might have more DPS doing partisan, I'm making the trade off of this will help me get more status downs. This will also help me get physical downs. The other re reason why I use wand normals is because of wand parry. So let's go back and let's look at the weapon action for Partisan. Partisan's weapon action is multifold. You know, it's got Volcraptor, but it in itself is also a parry. So why do I use wand parry over the weapon action of Partisan and its parry? And that's pretty much because you can't do much with the partisan parry. With that said, in other weapon combinations, it's definitely got power. I'll call out Talus as probably one of the interesting combinations where the partisan weapon action is probably very important. But other than that, when I parry with partisan, I can't cancel into normals. I can't cancel into photon arts. It's essentially just a parry to block attacks. You don't get PP from it. It's just there for a quick way to block attacks. So one parry for me is the superior parry because A, it essentially does the same thing. When I parry with one parry, I am able to do follow-up damage. And it also gives me invulnerability. So not in addition to that follow-up damage, it also gives me PP. One of the things we'll have to keep in mind when we use partisans is that it can be very, very PP hungry. Even when you're using it optimally and using Photon Art Avenge and getting Photon Art Avenge PP, it can still burn through your PP. And so using Juan Perry, it's very quick. It can get your PP back. 
and sometimes it will do more damage faster than using your combos such as Scythe into Assault Buster. Now, generally speaking, dueling with a boss or dueling with an enemy, I am looking for that type of combo, Scythe into Assault Buster. But there are going to be situations to where the enemy is attacking too fast or you are not going to be able to convert that without taking a hit or at least put you in a situation to where you might not be able to get the full amount of damage off. A lot of times what I see myself in situations are I'm not able to do a full cleave or scythe. Sometimes I can just do a uncharged scythe into a salt buster. And so when I recognize those situations, I just spent 26 to 36 PP in doing that. Now I say 26 to 36 because if I photon art avenge it, you can subtract 10 PP from it because I gain that with the Photon Art Avenge. But I don't do a lot of damage. When you look at the frame data, you'll see that there's not a lot of power in Uncharged Scythe. So instead, I can opt for Juan Parry to do technically more damage when you look at it from a DPS standpoint, even when you don't consider the 10% uh, weapon damage bonus. But I also get PP back. It's faster. I can get into my rotations better. So instead of trying to force my optimal rotation with Partisan, Juan Perry is a nice suitable replacement for when the enemy is attacking fast. This is another reason why I usually use Wave Crash. This one really comes down to a margin of inches between DPS on the wand and DPS on the Partisan. So Wave Crash is nice because it's fairly quick. 96 frames for the entire animation, which is going to be faster than most of your high damage partisan combos. You can also cancel it. So you can throw it out. And if you see the enemy is going to attack, okay, I'm not going to use the second hit. I'm just going to cancel it and parry and get additional damage. Now that is tricky. You have to be a little thoughtful and the timing's got to be there. It is effective. The other thing is, I still want to build up my down accumulation. I still want to build up my elemental downs and my physical downs. And so this is great. Compared to, let's look at Fatal Tornado, which is much longer. And you can't cancel Fatal Tornado, either charged or uncharged, with any type of parry, whether that's the partisan parry or the wand parry. The only thing you can do is, of course, sidestep, and it's got to be at a very particular time. So, many cases, I will use Wave Crash because from a damage standpoint, Wave Crash should technically be stronger. I can cancel it, even though it gets a little tricky, but it does give me that option. I'm building up down accumulation. Another great thing about Wave Crash, and this is pretty much for both one PAs, but Wave Crash being the faster one, if you're not in a position where you can Photon Art Avenge, Wave Crash is an ideal substitute. Really, the great benefits of Partisan is when you're able to Photon Art Avenge your Photon Arts, giving them 50% additional power. But you can imagine in situations where the enemy is attacking fast and you might not be able to get off the optimal Photon Avenge combo, such as Cleave to Assault Buster, you have things like Wave Crash. That allow you to cancel, respond to the enemy, but also during downtime. When the enemy is not attacking, anytime the enemy isn't attacking, Photon Art of Venge is essentially useless. And so I use this as a, what is going on? What is the enemy doing? From a DPS standpoint, if you look at the frame data and compare Wan to Partisan, Wave Crash is pretty much up there, especially when you take into account the elemental damage that you add on to it, in addition to the 10% damage boost that you get for being Tector. And so that's really the main reason that I use Wave Crash. There's going to be times where it is more effective and faster that allows me other options than my Photon Art Avenge combos. And so that's why I have my weapon palette, or at least my front weapon palette, the way that it is now. Normal, Wave Crash, Wand Parry. Now, the back palette is pretty standard. Fatal Tornado. Now, I don't use this as much just because of what we went over, not being able to cancel it though it does have its uses, and that's why it's there. Cleave, which is the main dealer, damage dealer going into Assault Buster, and then of course, Javelin. So now Javelin is tricky. This is going to be your 
down enemy moves. So the minute your enemy is down and they are down for a long period of time, let's say nine to 10 seconds, Javelin is going to be optimal. From a DPS frame data standpoint, anything under eight seconds is probably not going to be the most optimal move. So there might be situations where the enemy is down, but you know they're not gonna be down for long. Don't use Javelin. You still wanna to stay to things like that combo, or if you wanna build up your stacks of status and take a little DPS loss in the grand scheme of things, Wave Crash. In addition, this is where the weapon action comes into play while it's in the sub palette. Now, I do have my weapon action bound to my controller. I use my right stick click, or my right stick button to activate it. The problem with that is, if I wanted to use, say, Volkraptor, I have to use a Photon Art to start it. Because if you remember, anytime you bind weapon action to a key, it responds to the weapon that's active. So you can't see it, but I'm tapping the right stick, and I'm getting Partisan. But the minute I swing the wand, tapping the right stick, I get the wand weapon action. So I just have this partisan weapon action on my palette so that if I want to do Volk, even though it's super unreliable, but still building that habit to where Sega hopefully fixes it, it won't be a problem. I have access to it. In addition, if I want to use the partisan photon blast, which in most cases you do, it is very powerful. And I would say regardless of the damage bonus you get from Tector, the Partisan Photon Blast is very strong. So in situations where, let's say I've downed the enemy with Wand, instead of having to waste PP and time with the Photon Art so I can get my Partisan out, I can just Weapon Action into Photon Blast. And so that's really the main reason why that is there. But all in all, the reason why I have it set up like this is because I'm looking for that balance between the Partisan damage, but also building up Elemental Down and Accumulations. And so I'm doing that through normals. I'm doing that through wand parries, which are great for not only status accumulation, but also damage, fast, quick damage, in addition to getting that PP back. But generally when I'm playing wand partisan, it is heavily focused on the partisan attacks. And what I'm doing is finding spaces to either build PP back with wand normals and also build status accumulation, finding those ideal optimal times to use wand parry to continue that accumulation, that fast counter damage, and also regaining that PP. And then of course, wave crash is great for when there's a lot of downtime, for when you can't take advantage of Photon Art Avenge. I've kind of moved away from using Swift Smash or Rapid Smash, however it's called, but still when you know an enemy might be moving a lot, this can be great to track them down. So really it comes down to experience, it comes down to the situation and which one is going to suit the needs better. Usually it's going to be Wave Crash. For the fact of the matter is that I can do, if I need to track an enemy down, Uncharge Cleave into Assault Buster. Even though it takes a lot of PP, it is very quick. And so if you need to catch to an enemy, this is much faster than Swift Smash because once again, you don't get that maximum distance with Swift Smash unless you're locked onto a target. Cleave into Assault does not care. So those are some things to think about, even though you should use that judiciously just because it does burn a lot of PP. There are situations to where I really don't need Swift Smash to cover distance, so I opt for Wave Crash. And that's pretty much it. There's probably a lot more to cover, but you know, that's probably something that you all have questions about. And that will help me think about how, if I need to do a follow-up, what I need to do. But essentially when you look at my gameplay videos, one of the things that I want you to pay attention to is the decisions that I'm making. Even when I get hit, what was I trying to do and why? When I parry, when I uncharge cleave into a salt buster, understanding that I'm looking for speed and balance. I'm looking for how can I take advantage of the window of opportunity that I have? I'm not necessarily trying to always fit the highest DPS in because if that window isn't congruent with that DPS rotation, I'm probably going to lose out. And then how do I balance status accumulation? And how do I balance my PP? And also trade-offs of even though this move isn't super powerful, it's super fast. So other than that, hope this was helpful. I know there's a lot of you wondering, you know, when do I use certain moves? 
over another? When do I use partisan over wand? Hopefully this gives you a sense. And if you go back and watch my other gameplay videos, starting to see how those things manifest. And of course, I'm still learning and getting better and, and going from there. So of course, once again, if you have any other questions, let me know and I'll catch you next time.